Getting H-1 visa is one of the very important step in F-1 student's life. Sometime things can go south, your H-1 visa can be denied. In that situation, the obvious thing that comes to mind is move to Canada. Often time, students keep Canada as their backup plan. In this video, I'm going to talk about 10 options that are better than moving to Canada. Some of the options may not be applicable to all of you guys, but at least majority of the options will be. So I'm going to talk about 10 options that you can choose from. And in the end of the video, I'm going to give you a bonus option and I bet that bonus option will surprise you. So if you are interested to know more about those 10 options, keep watching. Welcome back. Let's talk about those 10 options. So the first option you would have is apply for O1 visa. Now O1 visa is given to a person with an extraordinary ability, which means that in order to get the O1 visa, you have to prove that you have some sort of extraordinary ability, which is not difficult at all to prove for PhD students, because in order to prove the extraordinary ability, you have to show to UICS or immigration department that you have some sort of research experience. How do you prove the research experience? If you have published any paper during your PhD or master's program, or if you have a patent, or if your research has been highlighted in the media, it is very easy to prove that you have an extraordinary ability and you can get the O1 visa. However, if you do not have the research publication, it might be a problem. So the best part of this O1 visa is that you can apply or your employer can apply for you at any time of the year and there is no upper cap. So your employer can apply as soon as they get the decision of H-1B rejection. So in a nutshell, this should be your first option if your H-1 visa is denied. Let's move on to the second option. The second option is start a PhD. Once you start a PhD, you will have another chance to get three years of OPT if you are a STEM student. And during that three years of OPT, you can join any company and ask that company to apply for H-1B visa again. So you will have basically three more chances to get the H-1B visa. This option is not a bad. I know this is slightly uh, longer option. You need to have some patience, but by doing PhD, you will also be increasing your education level. And after finishing your PhD, you will also get a higher salary. So this is not a bad option at all. I think this should be your second option. Now the third option is start a PhD with intention of not finishing a PhD. Once you are into PhD program, you can basically apply for a CPT, which will allow you to join a company full time as an intern. Once you go to the company or you can go back to your previous company where you had been working previously, and ask them to apply for H-1B visa. So this is one of the option. Now this option is applicable for both MS and PhD students because here you are not going to finish your PhD. So even if you are a PhD holder, you can still apply for a second PhD and start a second PhD because the intention is not to finish a PhD but leave the program in between. The fourth option you would have is shoot for academic H-1B. A lot of students do not know that H-1B has another a subcategory which is called academic H1B. So in that category you can only apply if you are in some sort of research uh, job or a teaching job. If you join a, a community college or a university as a lecturer or even as a postdoc you can shoot for academic H1B. So this option is also very nice option because of the fact that number one there is no upper cap on the number and number two this H-1B visa, academic H-1B visa can be applied at any time of the year. So once you get your regular H-1B denial letter, you can switch the jobs and join a job which is some sort of academic job or a research oriented job and then shoot for the academic H-1B. This is very much possible. This is definitely an option worth exploring. The fifth option you would have in that case is shoot for a J-1 visa. Now the J-1 visa is a special kind of visa that is given to only research personals. So in that case, you have to start a postdoctorate research, which means that MS student would not be eligible for this kind of visa. 
but if you are a PhD holder you can switch your job and start as a postdoc and switch your visa type from OPT to directly J1 visa and that will allow you to stay in US for as long as you are in that job. So the sixth option you will have is internal transfer. If your company has office outside the United States, you can basically ask your company to transfer internally to different location that is outside US and then you work there for one year and during that one year you ask your company to apply for H1B visa again and if you are lucky you will get picked up next year and you can come back with H1 visa to United States. So this is one of the option. I know personally one of my friend has done this. Uh, he was working here. Unfortunately, he didn't get picked up in the H1B visa lottery for three years consecutively. And then he moved internally into Germany. And the next year he was lucky enough that he got the H1B visa, then he came back to US. So this is one of the options worth exploring. But this will only work if your company has an office outside the United States. And this option is for both MS as well as PhD students. The seventh option here is to start another master's program. Intention here is not to finish the master's program, but to be eligible to get a CPT. And once you get the CPT, again, you come back to industry, stay there, work as an intern, and ask for your company to apply H1B visa. Now, you might think that this option is very, very similar to the option uh, previously discussed where I said start a PhD and do not finish the PhD but I put this option here because sometimes it is not easy to get into a PhD program whereas you can easily get into a master's program. The only difference here is that it might be a little bit heavy on your pocket because you might have to pay out of your pocket for one year but hey it's one of the option. You have this option. If you think other options are not suitable for you, you can think about this option. The eighth option is marry a U US citizen. Now this option will not work out for all of you guys, but for those who are seeing some US citizen at this moment, this is best option. If you marry US citizen right now, it will allow you to apply for a green card and eventually you will be eligible for a citizenship. So if your H1 visa is denied and you are seeing currently someone who happens to be a US citizen, it's not a good option. Just marry him or her and then apply for a green card and then that will lead to citizenship. Now this option is obviously not for those who are already married, but if you are not married and you are seeing someone, this is an option. The ninth option here is apply a green card in NIW category. Now NIW category is National Interest Waiver. So in this cap category, you do not need any sponsor to apply for green card. Basically, you can self-sponsor your petition for NIW category. This route might be slightly longer, but this is definitely a option for many of you guys but this is not a bad option because the ultimate goal is to get a green card and eventually the citizenship so if you start early you will finish early you will get there early as well the only difference here is that students from certain countries will get this green card under niw much faster than students from let's say india or china because the niw green card waiting list for indians and chinese is very long but if you are non-indian or non-chinese this is one of the best option because the ultimate goal is to get the green card and eventually the citizenship so this is not a bad option at all it just it might take a little bit longer you might have to wait but in my opinion this is not bad option at all the tenth option is marry a H1B visa holder. So this is a special case where you marry an H1B visa holder and convert your visa into H4 dependent visa. So in certain cases where the primary H1B visa holder has approved, has applied for the green card and I-140 is cleared, in that case the dependent spouse can actually get a EAD card based on that I-140 approval. So in that case, if you marry uh, H-1B visa holder and you become a dependent and your partner has cleared the I-140 application step, you can get an EAD card and you can stay in US legally and work here as well. So this is one of the options which is very, very less explored 
and a lot of students do not know about this option. Now this option is for both MS and PhD students but this will not work only in the case when you are already married. Alright guys these were my 10 options but in the beginning of the video I promise you that I am going to give you a bonus option and I am sure that this bonus option will surprise you. So the 11th option or the bonus option is join US Army or any defense forces in the United States. Yes, it sounds crazy, but it is not impossible. It is possible for people from other countries to join the defense forces. When I say defense forces, I do not mean that you join US Army as a fighter or a frontline uh, soldier. There are many other ways to join defense forces. For example, you can join a army research lab as a scientist or air force research lab as a scientist and that would allow you to immediately apply for a green card and citizenship eventually there are many other jobs like this for example if you are from a medical field you can join as a let's say nurse or a doctor or any other medical job and that will eventually lead to a citizenship which means as soon as you get the job you will get the green card and you can legally work and stay in the united states Although these kind of jobs are very rare to find, but these are not impossible to find. Believe me, such jobs do exist. And I know someone who has done that. All right, guys, that's all for today. These were all the options that I know. If you know any more options, please let me know in the comment section. And if you like the video, do like it and subscribe to the channel. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next video.